Life is a gift and a journey. Towards what goal are you journeying? This gift of life. Where do you want to spend it? With whom? For what? Whoever you are, wherever you are, God is inviting you to be His special messenger, to bring His word, His love, His joy, His peace to all peoples through the communications media. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with the APMR Group of Companies, Ricardo O. Santiago, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Royal Bread House, Teresita Villa Abrilia, Barbara Purse, Green Vet Group Philippines Incorporated, Quilance, Dr. Alvin and Alma Garduque, T. Linal Trucking Services, Cecil Snack Inn, Dasha, Francis Minor Star Gasoline Station, Esper Laundry Services Company, Consolidated Plywood Industries Incorporated, Churu Incorporated, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Melvin Aviles, Vita Rivera's Bookkeeping Services, Davao LB Junk Store, Mrs. Evelyn Principe Sion, Earl Vincent and Maria Teresa Santos, and Annabella E. Farrell. Offering of the Holy Mass. Accept most holy trinity, the sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the divine word, and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church for my dear ones, and for myself. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offerers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring groups, Vita Rivera's Bookkeeping Services, and Barbara Pearl's Cosmetics. Thanksgiving intentions and blessings of Friends of Paulines, Chardin, Nida Este, Lachis, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Children, Chino, Chian, Casey, Neng and Alot, Dr. Alfredo V. Abundo, Mr. Ed Edwin Kwa, Davo Bonifacio Motors Incorporated, Junjun Gabayan, Heidi Gabayan, Jewel Renegado, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Davo Diamond Industrial Supply, Attorney and Mrs. Ruben Abarquez, Philippine Green Farm Development Corporation, Mr. and Mrs. Eusebio Yagon and Family, Virgilio and Erlinda Abarquez, Thirdy Gabriento, Friends from Handmaids of the Lord, Central B1, Philadelphia Ligutum, Recovery and Healing of Mila Villa Abrilie, Jeremy Chu, Rodolfo Estera, for the successful bar examinations of Florence Alejandre, for the eternal repose of Encarnacion, Eleuterio, Imiterio, Jose Expedito, Cayetano Dualio, Tarsila, Jonaf, Regino Bombiza Jr., and Diana Abeliana. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. This Holy Mass, which you are watching on TV, is celebrated for all of us, but most especially for the sick and the handicapped, and those who cannot attend the Mass because of some serious reasons. Did you notice that today's Gospel message 
speaks of a God who initiates the search. The readings proclaim God's ongoing search for us and God's rejoicing in having found us. God seeks until he finds. Jesus, God incarnate, joins us humans in our lostness and travel with us in our way back home to him. Let us therefore approach the Father with confidence as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus Christ, his Son. To officiate this Holy Mass is Reverend Father Danny Montaña, RCJ. The choir during this Holy Mass is the Canticle of Praise of Carmel Parish, Davao City. Come, let us sing joyfully and celebrate the banquet of love. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome each other today in the 24th Sunday of the Ordinary Time, where everything we proclaim, it's God's mercy. Your presence, my presence, and being with each other is truly a marvelous mercy of God. Let us welcome the love of God for each and every one of us. Pakibati po makatab niyo ng magandang umaga. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. God wants to punish the Israelites for their sin of idolatry, but Moses appeals to his covenant promises and is able to obtain mercy for the people. The first reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out. This is your God, O Israel, you brought out from the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath be blazed up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, why, O oh Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with your strong hand? Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all these lands that I promised. I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Proclaim your 
contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humble, O oh God, you will not spurn. I will rise and go to my Father, to my Father. I will rise and go to my Paul confesses that he was once a blasphemer and a persecutor, the foremost of sinners. But having been granted the mercy through Jesus Christ, he now glorifies God. The second reading. From the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the king of ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. To you, Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed his parable What monk among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety nine in the desert? and go after the lost one until he finds it. And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman having 10 coins and losing one would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until he finds it. When she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I lost. And just the same way I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. 
So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out of one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hard workers have more than enough food to eat. But here am I dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat your hard workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fatted calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast. Because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again, he was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field on his way back as he neared the house. He heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf because he has seen back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, but not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fatted calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead, has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome each other on the 24th Sunday of the Ordinary Time, where we continue, of course, our reflections and seeing where we were last week. We said that our stand is for God alone, and so therefore, God is the number one. God is the priority of our life. Is God the number one in your life? Yes. Are you sure for this week? Oh, was he only the second to you? O pakisabi nga, Lord, you are the number one. Lord, you are the number one. O pakisabi sa kanan mo, number two ka lang sa akin. <laughs> Pero, ang ganda ng isang reflection doon, sabi ng aming professor before, sabi niya, when we love God, then we put everybody to the best of who they are. Bottom line is, when God is the priority of your life, everything around you is in order. Therefore, you do not have even to hate your father or mother, but rather to each one, there is so much love. And so therefore, did you love God above all? My story ahead. Pakisabi nga sa kanan mo, mahal ko si Lord, mahal din kita. Sige nga. O sa kaliwa, pakisabi, bukas na lang kita mamahalin. Today, as we come, I would like to start with my first personal reflection. You know, when I was reading the readings of the day, of this 24th Sunday, I simply remember when I go to confession. And every time I finish the confession, I would tell my confessor and say, Father, thank you for bringing to me the mercy of God. So wonderful mercy of God. Because without this mercy, I could not stand anymore. And so beautifully, that is my experience every time I go to confession. It's all about the mercy of God. And I would tell him, Father, in you, God is present with his mercy. And for giving me forgiveness, 
I am truly grateful. I am not worthy. I am sinful. But thanks be to the mercy that has shown in me. Alam mo minsan yung confessor, siya pa mag-bless ng aking kamay. And then I would say, Father, no, no, I have to bless you because you represent God. Do you see God when you go to confession? Are you sure? Ang ganda no, no? Seeing God when we go to confession. Can I remember the author said, Our smile alone is God's mercy. Ah, kaya you smile? That's the mercy of God. We can you smile? Oh, you see, you don't smile. You don't believe in the mercy of God. Sabi niya, when we twinkle our eye, it's the mercy of God. When we even close or open our eyes, all of which are expressions that God has been so merciful to us. And we can only feast in the mercy of God. Why? The mercy of God has been the hope and the foundation of our salvation. Without that mercy of God, we could not be here. All is because of the mercy of God. Apakisabi sa kanan mo, the Lord is merciful to you. Apakisabi sa kaliwam, that's why tumataba ka na. <laughs> I started with that because if you look at the parables, truly it, or they are all expressions of how God has been so good to them. And so let us discover this mercy of God. If you look at the three parables, there is always the hand of God represented by that woman, represented by that shepherd, represented by the father who would always take the first action. In the introduction, would say, in the mercy of God, it is God who is searching first. Kaya tandaan nyo, ha? Tayo yung unang hinahanap ng Panginoon. And hopefully, we allow ourselves to be found. Kaya nga, kahit anong tago natin, God will always look for us, will search for us. Definitely, because He has something to offer to us. And so, this mercy of God, that God is searching for us, will you allow yourselves to be found? Yes? O pakisabi nga, Lord, nandito ako. Are you sure? Kasi pag sabi, nandito ako, then you say, Lord, I am opening everything to you. Come in, come in. I allow you to enter into my life and bring me your mercy. Pero ang ganda ng dialogue na yan, when the Lord is searching for us, man's response is on, Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am sinful. Lord, I am weak. I have done all kind of evil. First reading, you look at it. When Moses was not just around, then they started to have their idols. Last Sunday, we said, Lord, you are the number one. For from Monday to today, how many idols did you have? How many idols did you have? Ha, baka si Lord hindi naging priority, ha? Then we have sinned a lot again because we have adored other idols in our life. But you look and realize that from the very beginning, from Genesis, when man had sinned, God came first and looked at them and said, Where are you? Ang ganda, no? Where are you? They were hiding because they have sinned. They have the fig leaves as their clothes because they felt they were naked. Where are you? It's a beautiful expression, beautiful question. God's own way of searching us because He wanted to offer something to us. O pakita nung yung kahanan mo, where are you? Anong sagot niya? <laughs> Walang sagot, no? Kasi nandito tayo. We allow ourselves to be found that in the mercy of God searching for us, while we say, Lord, we are not worthy, but there is God. Ang ganda kasi, when you say grace, even if you have not done something, merited something, God has put in the grace for us. Mercy is, even amidst our sinfulness, the Lord has come to us. Sino sa atin walang kasalanan? Sige nga, ako lang. Ay, yung bata, very good. You see, ang taas, ang ganda ng kama. Di ba, ganun, dapat sincere, honest. So nice and so beautiful. God is searching us. Kaya nga today, 24th Sunday, in the mercy of God, we allow ourselves to be found because God is there looking for us, looking at us. Why? Pangalawa, He wanted to offer us something. And what is He offering to us? He wanted to tell us, I have so much mercy for you. I have so much love for you. Are you willing to accept that love? 
beautifully in the offer of God, we can only say, I will stand and rise and go back to my Father. The beautiful responsorial psalm that we sang, pakikanta nga ulit, o tama na, okay na yon, di ba? <laughs> I will rise and go back to my Father and tell Him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, against you. Beautiful perspective of the love of God. We are not worthy. We are sinners. We have our weaknesses. But God in His love and mercy offers to us so beautifully, so great, His abundant love for us. That's why Paul today in the second reading would say, the grace of God is sufficient for us. Perhaps like Paul, you can say, Lord, I am a persecutor. Lord, I am nobody. Lord, I am nothing. But thanks be to God for the offer of your mercy. Then now I am an apostle, so on and so forth. Alam niyo kahit kami mga pari, sabi ko nga kanina, without the bishop sharing to us the fullness of their priesthood, we could not be here. You see, everything is simply a mercy of God. Your generosity, for example, even sponsors, it's not because you have money, but because God has touched you, because God has looked for you first, and that's why your generosity has come and you offered it. Your grace of voice or your reading, it's not for any other eyes, but either God has touched you, that's why you are here today. It's the mercy of God. So therefore, God is offering us His mercy. We can only say, I will rise and go back to my Father. Why? That would mean we are lost, we are wounded, we are nothing. But thanks be again to the offer of the love of God, to that sufficient grace, then we are here because of the love of God. Amen. So do you love the Lord? Yes. Are you accepting the mercy of God? Yes. That's why Beatitudes would say, Blessed are the merciful for they will be obtaining mercy as well. Are you merciful? Ah, oh, mukhang hindi. Are you forgiving? Yes. O pakisabi sa kanan mo, I am forgiving you. Sige nga. I am forgiving you. O sa kaliwa, pakisabi, sana magbago ka na. <laughs> Pero itong last, you see, God is searching for us. And God is offering us salvation. For what reason, therefore, is He doing this one? Paul again at the same reading will say, that we might have life eternal. Ah, you see? Our life goes beyond from this life. God wanted us to be with Him and to have life eternal. So beautiful that only God can give. So beautiful that only God can share. Because He's sharing His eternal life, His unconditional love. A love that does not know any merits. A love that does not see anything. But only a love that is glorious because God has given himself to each and every one of us. To the beautiful offering of God, eternal life, who does not want it? Ngayon, di ba, yung mga tao ayaw mamatay, tama? Do you want to die? Oh, ayaw nyo, pakisabi sa kanan mo, malapit ka na. Sige nga. <laughs> di ba? Kaya ngayon, with all the things, stem cell, with all the life that we would give. But you see, many times we forgot that this offer of God and is searching for us, all the times we run away from Him, we forgot that He wanted to offer us eternal life. Today, dearest friends, eternal life is once more in front of us. Let us accept this eternal life of God to the mercy of God that is unconditional, to the mercy of God that is overflowing, to the mercy of God that does not know any limit at all. You see, when God comes to us, it's truly the mercy and the love of God. I always like the image of an old person. Old person, na? Sino mga old dito? He says, when they run, approaching you, it's the mercy of God. Pa, pag matanda, uugod-ugod, tatakbo pa sa iyo to embrace you. Ah, what a grace. Pero alam mo, I would like to ask, to the image of this person running, asking the parents who are here, is still, still the same image that you have. That you run and meet your son or daughter every day, embrace and kiss them. I'm afraid that image is not seen anymore. I'm afraid that the image of our parents are only images holding cell phone and asking, where are you? Or where are you? And the son or daughter would simply say, Here na me. Pero ang ganda, di ba? The father, 
And hopefully, this would be your image. You run to meet them. You kiss and you embrace. I am sure that every son and daughter every day, every afternoon will go back home because they know the father or a mother is there to welcome and kiss them. Beautiful image of the love and mercy of God. Perhaps we have lost this sense. Perhaps we have lost this sense of belongingness. Why can't we reappropriate things back to us and go back to the gospel values and say, still these are beautiful realities and truth of our life. God's mercy be with you. To our brothers and sisters at home, in your sickness as well, as you continue to struggle, may the mercy of God be with you. We are one with you and praying for you. God be your healer. Amen. We stand to profess our faith. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord who desires not the destruction of sinners, but their repentance. May we acknowledge our own mistakes and accept wholeheartedly those who have failed. With confidence we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church and her leaders may fight all forms of evil and sin, and yet not condemn and reject the sinners. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders, judges, and the police force may shun corruption and respect the basic dignity of all, even of those suspected or guilty of wrongdoings. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the wayward, the lost, and sinners may not find themselves excluded by their families and communities, but may instead experience openness, forgiveness, and encouragement for a new life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That work-related problems and differences may be solved through frank and honest dialogue rather than through extreme measures that only lead to the suffering of all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the sick, dying, and the suffering who are listening and watching this TV Mass will find peace and joy in their earthly journey, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the sponsors, donors, and cooperators mentioned and not mentioned during the Mass may receive all the graces they need to grow as a Christian and continue to share their, we their wealth to the poor, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for our personal intentions as we ask the mercy of God, especially for those in Sambonga and as well as in Syria, as well as in all parts of the world, that peace may reign. God, our Father, as we seek forgiveness, give us a heart ready to forgive our brothers and sisters. May we experience and celebrate together the joy of your forgiveness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and your kindness accept this, your servant's offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered will into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Romulo and George, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. beautiful image of the father welcoming the prodigal son showing his mercy in the book of Henry Nguyen you would realize it's a father embracing the son but with one hand which is a hand of a mother and another hand with the hand of a father the hand of a mother symbolizes the mercy of God like a mother who would welcome anybody regardless of who we are today as we pray to our father let us feel the embrace of God from our weakness and pain, from our woundedness and hurt, to be healed by the Father, and so to show mercy as well to those we meet along the way, because that's the only story that we can give. To the Father now, we address the prayer Jesus taught us. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we are always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. I would like to invite you for moments of silence as you bow your heads and experience the love and the mercy of God turn into peace. And in your heart, allow room as well for forgiveness and mercy to those who have wrong against you. To people who have wounded you, may you be able to say, I forgive, and God's mercy be with you. In the spirit of the love and mercy of the Father, we offer to each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayers of the sick. Father, your Son accepted our sufferings to teach us the virtue of patience in human illness. Hear the prayers we offer for our sick brothers and sisters. May all who suffer pain, illness, or disease realize that they are chosen to be saints and know that they are joined to Christ in his sufferings 
for the salvation of the world, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Do not forget that as you go back home, the mercy of God is searching for you, is offering you love, as well as leading you to salvation. Searches, offers, and leads. May we accept the mercy of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head for the blessing of God. May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and may you come happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.